Hello! <laughs> Good afternoon! Hello everybody! I'm Paul. I'm Jason. And together we are Those Vegan, vegan guys. guys. And this is one of our ruddy Sunday live in the kitchens where we get up with all... <laughs> we get up. We get up to. We get up to all sorts. We've done a tofu dedicated one. Dedicated to tofu it was. Today's is dedicated to uh, garbanzo chickpeas. Garbanzo gala with the gays. It was his idea, that That's title. <laughs> That's what we called it, just because we thought it'd be a, a bit of fun. So today, uh, we're going to be making um, hummus. We're going to be making Chino-style spread. And we're going to be making, we're going to be attempting to make falafel. Are you going to be honest with the forks and let them know? Oh, absolutely. I've never made falafel before in my life. I've done a little bit of key research kind of on the internet. I haven't taken any recipe specifically and said like, oh, right, I'm using this recipe. I've just kind of got the idea of this much of that, this much of that. But the only thing I haven't got is fresh parsley. And usually <clears throat> falafel requires uh, fresh parsley. I'm going to be using frozen coriander and kale. Kale instead. Kale in our falafel. Uh, randomly. So it's like, you know when you did like your dedicated um, tofu? Because like tofu is a bit of a mystery for a lot of people, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't think chickpeas are as much of a mystery. No, but I don't think people know how many things you can do with them. The versatility yeah. um, that I have observed uh, from this man in the kitchen over the last, uh, the last few months. Uh, and then obviously quite recently with the... Um, Instant Pot. Yeah, I did like an Instant Pot video. It's in our recipes playlist uh, and made hummus and tuna style spread, but I'm going to be making a lot more uh, than that today. I'm still going to be doing those um, two full things. Now, before we carry on, I need to talk about the elephant in the room because I uploaded a quick live video last night. And just because I've been talking politics recently, there's a couple of people, a couple of subscribers who've said, um, I came here for the vegan food. I haven't come here to talk about politics. Why don't you stick to your vegan food? Um, no, that will never happen. This channel is those vegan guys because we are those vegan guys, Paul and Jason. And we're both very political people and we're both very liberal now, I'm not bothered if you want to uns unsubscribe because you're a Trump supporter, but I do not support anything the man has done for the last four years. He has divided America like I have never seen it divided in my lifetime, ever. He is a supporter of the QAnon uh, bullshit theory, which is something else I do not, we do not support on this channel whatsoever. It's ludicrous. People trying to get into power to support paedophiles eating babies. Come on, guys. This is not that world. I just, so I had to say that because it's like, if you want to unsubscribe because we're liberals, bye. Bye, Felicia. Don't let the, the, the door hit you on the way out. Elephant in the room. Acknowledged. Yep. Talked about. Um, and, yeah, that's everything that Paul just said, basically. Oh, and can I also just say, I'm not a massive supporter of Biden. I'm not like, I haven't been following his career. I've, I've, I've only just tapped into Biden and Harris, really. But in comparison to the last four years, just the first tweet from them both when it was declared, and then their speeches... Tell me everything I need to know. Now, don't get me wrong. If Biden turns out to be an asshole and, and, and he's against LGBTQ rights, or he did mention trans people in his first speech, I'll be the first one to be doing a blog about it. Of course. But for now, such a sense of relief for our friends over in America. For us all around the world, America is our beacon. It is our beacon, whether we like it or not. It's one of the most powerful nations in the world. And to see that over half the population have voted for change and for unity and for no more division and hatred and bullshit QAnon, I'm all for that. I am all for that. Yeah. And I think 
to be honest, th thank you for acknowledging that, and I think it was important for us to just reference it. Absolutely. I think the the vast majority of people who um, who, who visit our channel um, and the lovely people who have uh, have subscribed and have become part of this wonderful community, um, and it, uh, quite a few people have said in the comments, like um, people are familiar with our channel, uh, our core, what we do, but who we are as people mm -hmm. as well. Um, it's really important. Um, Angie says, they don't know you very well if they think you're only a recipes-based group. Well, that's the thing, <laughs> Angie, actually. Very well said, love, uh, and thank you for that. Um, the, uh, the We've always been political on this channel. I, I, I put a link in the community thread because somebody said, like, you've never talked about politics this, this much. And I'm like, do you follow the channel? Have you seen my uh, vlogs about Boris Johnson and Brexit and Cummins? Yeah. They're all there. I'm very political. Many of my kitchen vlogs have been extremely political. And I'm a bleeding heart liberal. I'm a bleeding heart liberal. I, I would rather be that than anything else. Heart on sleeve. Heart so on there sleeve. You go. That's all that stuff out the way. Um, I've just got to give go a few on. shout outs. Because um, Tim said, tell them to bugger off. It's your personality that makes the channel. It would be a very dull place without it. You don't need to explain anything, guys. No, but I, did. I just wanted to clarify that that's who uh, who we were yes and you know? Vanessa um, just because it made me giggle um, I agree with you guys completely but reserve judgment about kale and falafels I, I, well <laughs> actually who was that um, that was Vanessa Vanessa um, Sainsbury's do want kale and beetroot falafel and it's delicious mm. we bought we've only ever bought it on offer we like our yellow stickers and it goes in the freezer well and it's always really nice when we have our greek style platter which is basically pita hummus salad um falafel you know all of the above uh they've been great to just whack in the air fryer but my newfound love of the instant pot and the cooking of chickpeas as what's led to this video today. Because if we could, if we can all buy a packet of dried chickpeas, 500 grams for like a couple of quid, and half of that bag does what I'm about to do today, three different things. That's great. That's great, isn't yeah. it? In terms of, uh, you know, if you're on a budget, especially, it's, uh, it's fantastic. I'm going to just uh, give a few shout outs um, because the chat has gone silly already which That's is lovely brilliant. though i love that everyone comes and chats amongst yourselves yeah. as well it's wonderful 79 in the house give us a thumbs we up we don't have to name everybody we need to get out of that habit of going to the top of the list and and saying hello to everybody okay Actually, hello everybody is thank you for being here we're not going to shout out everybody's names but we are going to shout out leanne Head Rider and Kelly, who are our moderators, and we'll be making sure that the chat runs smoothly today and kicking any assholes right out of there. Yes. Yes. So, do you want to talk briefly about what prep you've done? Yes. So, I have quick soaked i mentioned this in the uh, in uh, a vlog recently and it, i've done exactly the same as i did in the first instant pot vlog which is i've taken about 200 between 200 and 230 grams of dried chickpeas i've poured boiling what boiling water over them for one hour and that's a quick soak method and then i've put them in the instant pot on pressure cook, on high pressure for 40 minutes. And what I've ended up with is this huge amount of chickpeas. Now, this is only about uh, two thirds. The other third, I've done in the little uh, accessories pot that comes that you can get for the air fryer. Thank you, May, for that. Um, and so I've done these in the air fryer to dry them out a bit. Now, this is specifically for the falafel. So they've been quick soaked. Yes. They've been cooked for 40 minutes in the instant pot. They've been drained. And I'm, I haven't made the same mistake. I've kept the aquafaba 
the stock that I um, boiled them in because I'll be using that as a liquid for the hummus. Um, but yeah, apparently when you're making falafel, um, rather than using very, very wet chickpeas, it's much better to use them a little bit dry. So that's going to be, I think, the last thing we do. Okay. Um, yeah. It's interesting that you mentioned that, actually, because Deb, has, it actually it's partially links in with what Deb Katz has just asked, which is, Paul, have you made any crispy air fried chickpeas yet? Yeah. Wait, oh, no, not in the air fryer. Um, but we've had them many times in the oven. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. In a pot, very similar to that, actually. I usually do them in a round cake tin. Um, and I usually spray them with oil, bit of paprika, a uh, bit of dried chilli, salt and pepper, garlic powder, onion salt. Just give them a good shake and put them in the oven. We've done them many times. Somebody mentioned kale crisps as well before, which mm. apparently you can do brilliantly in your air fryer. I've only ever done them in the oven as well. Kale crisps, but they're gorgeous. It's a whole new world, isn't it? Air fryer technology. I'll, I'll try that, Deb. I'll try, um, I'll, I'll use this pot. Uh, because when I've done them before, spicy chickpeas, rather than have them as a snack, we've had them over a salad. Oh, it was good. Really <laughs> good. A really good mixed salad and then just, you know, crispy, oven-baked, spicy chickpeas on top. Beautiful. I'm just, uh, Muddy Paws was saying um, that they tried to do one, but it went wrong. I nearly lost the teeth. <laughs> I suppose, yeah, you've got to be a little bit careful with that, haven't you? Uh, with uh, with the old chickpeas because they can uh, they can get quite hard. Squirrel chat. So we're going to get cracking soon um, because we always wait sort of a little bit of time yeah, just no texture. for people who are uh, cooking along or you know maybe doing one component um, and just for people who just you know arrive a little bit late, mm. which is fine. I need some lemon juice. Oh, you've got to do your lemon juice, haven't you? I have. Yeah. Lisa says I've eaten loads of chickpeas already this afternoon. So just one lemon. I saw your picture, <laughs> Lisa. It was you that put the picture in the group, wasn't it? Like a chickpea curry kind of thing that I've liked this morning. Is this all there is left? Yeah. How are we for ice cubes? We're okay. Are we? Yeah. Okay. Do you want that one then? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, we should give this a cut. Um, what should I squeeze over? Oh, Helen, get one. This lemon juice is for um, both the uh, hummus. And I'm going to put a bit in the falafel mix as well. So I'm just squeezing lemon juice. People don't need to see that. Nah, I just wanted to just... Um, for a second. I will also be using, if you've ever seen any of my previous hummus videos, uh, the ice cubes that Jason and I have in our cup of boiling water in the morning, which is basically fully pulped lemon. We chop up whole lemon, just cut the very ends off, skin as well. Usually do about one and a half lemons in our nu nu Nutribullet. Good shake of turmeric, good shake of black pepper, water. We we blitz that in the Nutribullet and we make that into ice cubes. So I'll be using one of them in my uh, hummus today. Because um, I watched a lady make luxury hummus, uh, luxury Middle Eastern hummus, Turkish I think she was um and she said a lot of people don't realize that ice is one of the main tricks with um with hummus while you're mixing it oh, oh. It smells lovely <clears throat> simple smell of lemon such a nice smell lemon juice is gorgeous yeah we've had uh, have you ever had a, have you ever had a crispy green salad with just lemon juice and salt to dress it Gives you a feel of, do you remember the old side salad you, you used to get in? I'm, I've not been to one for years, so they might still do one. You used to get side salad when you went to an Indian restaurant and you had a curry. They'd always bring you a little side salad. Yes. And it was always just lemon juice and salt. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So nice. So refreshing. 
So there you go, that's my lemon juice. Kelly's um, Kelly's eaten a few jammy dodgers, scoffed a few jammy dodgers before before we started. We had a piece of toast, Kelly. Piece of toast, tied us over. You passed me that tea towel, Bernie, if you can't keep going. Certainly will. <sighs> um, so, right, what shall I do first? Ah, oh, did you know what? I'll probably do the Tuno style spread first. Tuno style spread? I can do that right here on the table. Really, really easily. And I need a bit of the lemon juice for that as well. As usual with our lives, particularly our Sunday cook along in the kitchen lives, um, I will uh, be tending to the camera when required. Um, because most, if not all of you in the chat, know that the kitchen is not really my home. It's Paul's home. Uh, and I will get out of the way when needed and uh, manoeuvre the camera so you can see what's going on. Right here, on the table. Right, is that enough for a nice hummus? Yeah, that's enough for a nice hummus. So yeah, I've split this mix into like three thirds, obviously. Um, so I've got my dr dried ones that have been done in the air fryer after they've been cooked for the falafel. And I've got half of the other ones now here to make the tuna style spread. So what I did with this last time, it, well, honestly, it worked out so well. I was so surprised how simple this was. I was amazed at it, to be honest. It, it, it came out so well, didn't it? Yeah. So you're mashing. I'm mashing my chickpeas. See the mashing? The chickpea mashing? I suppose you could do this with a fork as well, really. It's just about making them not chickpeas anymore. You know what I mean? But then you end up with a masher like that. Nice. Nice. It's okay. There we go. It's a certain type of ASMR. A certain type. <laughs> right. Now, this... Do you want to just show that? Yes. And say where we got it from. It's two crispy seaweed thins, sweet soy and sea salt. I can't remember where we got this from. Sainsbury's. Sainsbury's. From Sainsbury's. Right. So now it looks like that. All most discernible chickpeas have been smushed. And this is the, the texture. This is how you get the kind of texture. I'll chop more with my spoon end. I mean, I could eat that, smell that. Whoa. Because I cooked these in stock. Just a standard stock cube. So, smushed. Smushed up chickpeas in the bowl. And now we add some finely chopped onion. And what I've done here is I've, I've finely grated. Oh, Helen asked me, asked me the other day about my coleslaw. So... When I say grated, I'm actually wrong. I use a ma I use a mandolin, and I use. It's going to show you. And I use that blade. Do you see with all the little? So that's what I do when I make coleslaw. That's how I do my carrots and my courgettes. Helen says I've ordered one, Paul. Oh, fantastic! I tell you what. Helen, I hope you've got yourself a glove as well, love. Goes through me. I can't watch it, me. I can't watch anyone using those. Uh... I need to buy a glove. I need to buy one of those uh, Kevlar, is it, gloves. You know, so you don't yeah. grate your hand up. So, some chopped onion in there. Some of that onion stayed quite long, but do you know what? I'm okay with that. Yeah? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Textural. So, yeah, I grated uh, one red, one white onion. And what I always do is I just cut off one end, leave the, the, the end with the biggest stalk, cut off one end, skin it, and then use my mandolin so I don't chop my hands off. A little bit more onion in there. Tim just said, I was, I was just thinking I value my fingers a bit too much to brave using one. Well, yeah, Tim, you can get them gloves from um, Amazon. It's like a chainmail glove. 
Yeah. It's got sliced off your fingers. So this stuff was a bit of a revelation, wasn't it? Yeah. A couple of pieces of this Itsu seaweed, but any dry seaweed you've got, and you just want to crumble it in there as small as you can get it. Whoa. That vegan chick. I love a bit of fingertip in my slaw. <laughs> <laughs> That's grim. That's grim. Have we got time to answer a quick question while you're doing this? Kat says, do you think you guys will be doing Christmas sweet treats in your near future cook-alongs? I've just bought lots of Xmas chocolate moulds and cookie cutters to make goodies with my daughter. That's lovely. That's lovely. Um, I always think it's really nice when parents cook with the kids. Oh, it is. It's, um, whether we'll be doing anything. It's a much needed thing, that, that's uh, missing a lot from the world. Yeah. I don't know whether we will or not, really. We tend to buy stuff, don't we? Like sweet stuff. I'm going to put one more in. So, who knows? Who knows? Possibly. Oh, Muddy Paws, thank you so much. Bless you. <laughs> For a glove to look after your dannies. <laughs> I will get one with that. Thank you so much, Muddy. <laughs> I will. Bless. I will. That's so nice. Yeah, you'll notice I've got a plaster on my thumb at the moment. I sliced, I sliced through my nail um, last week when I was chopping something. I had my thumb there. I went actually through my nail, so the top of my nail is going to come off at some point because it's all black and horrible at the moment. It was awful. You was very brave. Very brave. I think I would have passed out, to be honest. I was so angry because I was halfway through making dinner and I was starving. I was like, right, if I need stitches, I'm having my dinner first. St Stacey says, is it just me or does the drawer of your air fryer look like a statue from Easter Island? Uh, I get you. Yeah, I can kind of see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Very observant. Right. About half of that lemon juice, because I want to save the other half for the, yeah, for the, um, so that's what we're looking like now. And yes, there are some quite big bits of seaweed in there, but you can always get in with your, um, I mean, I could have blitzed it first and made it into a powder. Mm. And, and then added it. But this is how I did it last time, and it was happy. honestly, it was perfect. We had it on sandwiches for a few days in a row, didn't we? It's... Sorry. It's fantastic. And I think, I mean, obviously, it's not everyone's preference, but I think for a lot of people, when you eat a sandwich, you want some textural element there. You, you don't want it just to kind of be one consistency. We've said this before about, like, uh, pie and pasty fillings. Pie and pasty filling is the same. You know, if it's all just kind of like pureed and there's no texture in there. That's yeah. just me personally. That's us personally anyway. Um, salt and pepper. <laughs> John, uh, picking up on what you said about um, cutting your, your finger. He said, uh, I kicked my left big toenail off the other day. I will never dance again. Oh, goodness me. That sounds grim. Hope you're okay, John. Uh, Defender of Animals says, what's the vegetable you hate chopping the most? That question would be specifically directed to Paul because I don't really do an awful lot of chopping. Just lately, my onions, they've gone dead strong. and fry my eyes out when I chop them. And normally they don't affect me. So whether I've just become sensitive to onions, it's very strange. I'm going to put a little splash of apple cider vinegar in there. Just for a bit more of that tart. Because I've not got a lot of lemon juice. I know it's only like simple little things, but I like you all to be able to see what's going on. Even if it's just a little, you know, a little smidge of summer. Mm. Oh, thank you, Valerie, for joining us. Hello, guys. First time watching from USA. Hi, Val. Nice one, Valerie. Um, Can you pass me the... Uh, mayo. Yes. So I haven't made mayo. It's up there, the squirting bottle. I haven't made mayo. Sometimes I make mayo, sometimes I buy it. It all depends how I feel. Yeah, I need it down. Yeah. I don't want to wait for my life to be over. Keep singing it. He keeps singing it. It's a bloody good song. 
You need to learn. Everybody needs to learn what a good song that is. You got enough? Yeah. Yeah. Now, the real shame is that I don't think I've got any frozen sweet corn or tinned in. I would have some this time. I didn't do last time. Tuno style spread. Fabulous. And let's, uh, let's have a taste from us. Whoa, smells lovely. Oh, nice one, Ruth. Mm. Is that as good as it was last time? It might be slightly better. Really? Mm. I wonder if that's because the mayo's in now. Has he got... Oh, is it? Have you used slightly a little bit more lemon than last time? Apart from cider vinegar in. So it's added more of that tart. That's good. Zing. A yeah. little bit of zing mm -hmm. to it, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, proper nice. Done. Tuna style spread. Tuna style spread. Gorgeous on a sandwich. Gorgeous on a spud. Oh, yes. Mrs. B, you filth. <laughs> yeah, on a bit of potato. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please and... understand, by the way, if I ever call you filth, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully most people get our northern humour now. Yeah. Uh, 105 in the house. Thank you, guys. Take a moment out. Give us a thumbs up, if you don't mind. It would be massively appreciated. It really helps. The other thing I'll mention now while I'm thinking about it, because I forgot, um, give us a subscribe, because you know what? We're doing this stuff all the time. It would really, really mean a lot. It's free, completely free for you to subscribe. We do a live a week. We do a live a week, and 44% of people who often tune in to this channel, astonishingly, aren't, aren't subscribed. Yeah. have no reason, no understanding. This is how our lives go. Sunday, Saturday, Friday. Sunday afternoon in the kitchen, live in the kitchen, then the following weekend, oh, and this is always at three o'clock, the following weekend, Saturday night, mukbang, 8.30. The following week, Friday night, quiz, nine o'clock. But we do random lives as well sometimes, don't we? Just kind of... I have a tendency to get me born out coming with I did it last night. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're all excited. Understandable. About Biden and Harry. Understandable. Mark the moment. I'm going to add a bit more on you. Mark the moment. Check multiple sources of news and oh, information. All yeah, that jazz. That's, that's a huge one. Even as a liberal, I watch Fox News. Because I want their perspective as much as I want CNN, MSNBC, BBC, Sky. But flick around the the channel, honest to goodness, honest to goodness, the news channel that I have found the most reliable, the most honest, the most real, the most full of personality, and the most unbiased is the Young Turks. Yeah, TYT. TYT. Yeah, I completely wholeheartedly agree. Uh, Ellie has asked a question, but I don't think we're going to be able to answer it. Go on. Um, ooh, what you got planned for next week's mukbang? <laughs> no, I don't know yet. Don't know yet. Last week we did, uh, uh, last time we did a taste test, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, of like Christmassy stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, we've done a few. We've different... done pizzas. Done the pizza thing. Done the pizza. That's great. We've done a Greek. Yeah. Mediterranean. Mediterranean. Inspired. We've done a Chinese. Yes. We usually, you know what, Ooh. sometimes we don't decide until, like, Thursday, Friday. I'm deciding right now. I'm glad you asked because you made me list everything. You know what's glaringly missing? Indian. Ah. Oh, you're setting yourself a challenge there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh. So, well, well, bang. Bev's going to show me some stuff. Yeah. Bev Llewellyn. Hi, you, Bev. Just say yeah. Nod. <laughs> Oh, Laura, thank you. That's a lovely thing to say. Can you read that? Did you read that? Yeah, thank you, Laura. Really nice. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. Well, there we go. We've not missed too much. I wonder how many people who do watch Fox News also watch other channels or just stick to Fox News. Well, Because I, I do like that about myself. I'm going to blow me on trumpet. Yeah. I do actually make sure to, mainly through YouTube, but I do watch Fox segments because I want to see what they're reporting. Absolutely. I don't. I think they're becoming a much less dangerous channel, which is why people are outside now saying down with Fox. 
because they've realised, you know, that they can't keep pandering to one man. This is about America. It's about the country. Uh, Leanne says, oh, we'll do an Indian and join you. Oh, yes. Excellent. Right. So there you go. That's the Chuno uh, style spread. Now, you could add some um, sweet corn to that, either from a tin or fresh even or frozen and just leave it in your fridge uh, and it will last a good four or five days. It, it lasted for us. Maybe even longer in a in a sealed uh, container. We just had it in a bowl like this the first time I made it. Yeah. But honestly, guys, it is so it is such a good. Now I've added a bit more onion, Jess. I don't want to wait. Oh, that song is doing my head in there. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. That's so nice, guys. Honestly, mm. it's got zing and tang, but it's also got creaminess from the. From the chickpeas. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Really nice, that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Spot on. Uh, okay. Lisa uh, made onion barges for the first time today and was bloody lovely, she says. Oh, Lisa, will you share your recipe in um, that vegan group? Uh, and if I make them for next week's mukbang, I'll credit you. I won't. Talk about my recipe. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. Good, good, good. Yeah. Uh, oh, Who's go back up? Yep. Uh, Muddy, I haven't tried it with lentils, but I've done it with sweet potato. It's a vlog on the channel, just sweet potato and flour. And I'll tell you what I've been making recently, and that it's gorgeous. You know, the cocoa yogurt. That in a bowl, some frozen coriander, a bit of salt and pepper, a bit of garlic powder, self raising or plain flour, both work, make it into a dough, roll it out really flat. Dry pan fry it, nan breads. Gorgeous. We've had them loads, haven't yeah. we? Yeah. But I haven't tried the lentil one yet, Muddy. Muddy, are you in our group on Facebook, that vegan group? If you are, share the recipe yes. for, for that lentil flatbread. And Lisa says, will do, my lovely. Thank you, my sweetheart. There's a lot. So, chickpea recipe number one. Done. 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 Give you another quick look. There's the lovely tuna style spread. If you bring it back a little bit from the screen, um, it'll be slightly better focused. Very delicious. Sweet corn would make it perfect. But just on bread, honestly, it's gorgeous. That can go in the fridge, Mr. Bromley. Should I take the spoon out? Or just... You can leave the spoon here. Yeah. Right. Now, I'm going to be over here. I'm going to pull the jeans up. I'm going to be over here to do the hummus. You might need to speak up a bit. Oh, oh, wait. Right. The rest of the chickpeas that I've got in the colander are going to now become hummus. So I've got this many. <laughs> Denise says, definitely going to make that for tea on a bagel. Mm, yeah, that'd be, nice. yeah, yeah. that'd be nice. Yeah, especially um, the onion and chive bagels. I mean, it'd be lovely on a plain bagel, but imagine it on an onion and chive bagel. Whoa! Whoa. Uh, right. Come on, Barbara, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm going to need to sort this space out because. <laughs> I'm going to need to be over here at some point, Jason. You're going to need to be over there? Yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Um, right. Chickpeas. I have this many chickpeas in the, in the food processor. So it's probably about equivalent to a, a tin and a little bit. Oh, Lisa, yeah. It's from, what's it from? Dawson's Creek. Dawson's Creek. I ne don't want to wait. Never watched it. For my life to be over. I don't know the words, but the melody. <laughs> right. Tahini. So now you know, Lisa. Yes, and if you swap sides, yes. that would be much more sensible. Oh, nice. 
tahini, creamy tahini from um, Sainsbury's. <laughs> oh, Denise, thank you so much. Thanks for helping to keep me sane this year. <laughs> I think we've all helped each other to keep sane, haven't we? Say ditto, my love. Absolute ditto. And Tim says um, that song is now going to be in his head all week. Sorry, Tim. Sorry, Tim. I want to wait for my life to be over. It's a great song, though. It is a good song. It's about living your life now and, and you know, not wait. Right. Two big heaped teaspoons of tahini. Actually, I'm going for three. It's so important in hummus. Three tea tablespoons of tahini, yeah? No, heaped teaspoons. Three fruit. heaped teaspoons. But really heaped. Of tahini. Yeah. Mmm. I love tahini. The rest of the lemon juice. Important, of course. Unfortunately, I haven't got any um, fresh garlic, but I've got garlic powder. So a little bit of garlic powder. And some cumin. Cumin. Quite a bit of cumin. Um, mm. I haven't got fresh garlic, but I have got this, I forgot. <laughs> Lisa says... I've got these garlic ice cubes, oh, yeah. so I'm going to use one of them in the... Excellent. Oven. I'm also going to use one of the lemon ice cubes, like I said. Has anyone else got a freezer that fights with you to stay shut when you've only just opened it and shut it? He goes... <laughs> That's what he does when you close the door. Yeah, Lisa says, my maiden name was Dawson, and everyone used to call me Dawson's Freak. I no longer liked the programme. <laughs> Bless you. Right. Now then, where's my liquid? Here's my aquafaba stock that I used to cook the chickpeas. So I'm going to pour some in straight away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not much, but enough to kind of get it moving. Just a little bit. Yeah, and then I'll add more as it's needed. <laughs> Noise! Oh. <laughs> you did an Emmy. I totally did. Totally did an Emmy. reading your comments while it's doing its processing. Garlic ice cube. Lemon ice cube. And now more stock. You just kind of add it until you get to your desired consistency. I don't know why why people in the comments are uh, talking about uh, John having a small chopper and that there's nothing wrong with a small chopper. It's all gone wrong. It's all gone wrong in the chat. Leanne says, um, if you've got your contact lenses in when you're chopping onions, your eyes won't water. No, I had them in. You had them in? You had them in? <laughs> I'm just laughing at muddy paws. 
Um, I'm glad you've mentioned, uh, actually, Muddy Paws, uh, about Michelle. I wonder if Michelle Lowe is cooking along. She had no chickpeas, using sprouts instead. <laughs> oh, for reference as well, Michelle Lowe is... Oh, she's there. Hello. Oh, yes. Michelle's live at five o'clock with her monthly Q&A live feed. So if you fancy, because we'll be done by then. Uh, so, you know, if you fancy staying online, yeah. You got the time, pop along and uh, and see what Michelle's up to with her Q&A. Vegan psychologist and all that. Oh, it's very bright, isn't it? There we go, that's better. Yeah, even a bit closer, maybe. Yeah. Hummus, my darlings. Chickpea recipe number two. Really, really, really good. Creamy, delicious hummus. Now, here's the problem, Bromus. What? I've now got to get the hummus into something. Because I need to um, clean out the food processor. Because I've got to use it for the... Um... Do you want me to do that? What? Clean out the food processor. Where's the, where's the box that's the middle-sized box? I'm always... <sighs> Michelle says she should have been cooking along with us today because she's got a million cans of chickpeas. Well, you can always watch it later, can't you? Yeah, we've made tuna-style spread so far, Michelle. And um, the, and hummus, obviously. Uh, I don't want to use that one, it's too big. Not like me, it's so much too big. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, it's here! It's you! Bloody keeping biscuits and things. I need this for You know what? Right, let's just talk about this for a second, because we've got a second. There's no rush here, okay? I'll also reference these biscuits. Where are they? There, crackles So, in terms of free from stuff, this might be one of the best free from things that I certainly have ever had. Um, and that's why it was protected in a Tupperware box. The free from shortbread. From Sainsbury's. From Sainsbury's. Absolutely gorgeous. Not healthy at all. Oh, terribly unhealthy. But as a little treat, now and again, really good for the festive season as well, I would imagine. For those of you that are into your shortbread. So there you go. That explains why it was in uh, the Tupperware box that Paul wanted to use. Protecting them. My, sit there. One sec. Come round a little bit so people can see what you're doing. I'm just taking the hummus out of here now. Oh, I know. I know. I just like people to be able to see. I need to clean this. Yeah, Kelly, it's awesome. But like I said, it is red all over the front of that packet. It is not healthy. But like I said, moderation. Ooh. What? Um. Lauren says, my mill made us some vegan soda bread scones yesterday. They were fab. Do you know what mill means? No. Mother-in-law. Ah. There we go. I could tell by the way you said it, you didn't know. No. I'm terrible with uh, abbreviations. <laughs> Lisa says, who leaves half a pack of biscuits? Never seen that before. <laughs> it's very, very difficult. Very difficult with those particular ones. We're very, very good at limit, li limiting ourselves. Yeah. I feel like my stomach's coming back. Even um, even like with the, our digestives, so digestives, jammy dodgers, they're like our go-to biscuit. But we're not, we don't go silly with it, do we? We don't go silly with it. Uh, Jeff, you may as well be showing and having a little finger dip. Or use a spoon because people are like, it's so unhygienic. And I, I just can't be bothered. So the hummus is done, which is fabulous. And um, even though I offered to wash the food processor, Paul's doing that as well, which is amazing. Uh, because at the end of all of this, you don't see it. You don't see it, but... The, the, there is quite a lot of washing up to do after after a live cooking session. There is. Um, it's not wrong. So I will be tackling that later on. But yeah. Have you shown fork? Yeah. This is the, I mean, there's not much to look at, really. It's hummus in the Tupperware pot, isn't it? 
yeah, it's all about the taste. But yeah, just everyone's seen it. It's really thick and fluffy and gorgeous and yeah, it's good hummus. Damn good hummus. And again, on a baked potato, on a baked potato with butter, you what? Mm. Isn't it nice? It's so good. Mm -hmm. It really is. And the great thing about this is you can kind of separate off the batches. What I use, what I sometimes do is I'll take half out, so I've got half plain hummus, and then I'll throw maybe a little bit of red pepper, maybe some chilli, whatever you fancy, coriander and lemon, lemon rind grated. You know, you can you make it whatever flavour, whatever flavour you want. Mm. But just as plain, mm. good, healthy hummus, no added oil. Let's not forget, only tahini, that's the only oil element in there. Mm. The rest of it has been done with the aquafaba. And you can use the juice from your tinned chickpeas exactly the same. Recipe number two. Mm. Chickpeas, amazing. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. If um, you are watching along and you haven't already, I know we, we asked a while back, um, but just close the chat window down for a second. Give us a thumbs up. It really helps us um, to talk to YouTube and let them know that you find people are enjoying the content uh, and it helps spread the word. So, yeah, that'd be massively appreciated. Thank you. That's gorgeous. I mean, we always say this, I always say the same thing. An hour or two in the fridge. Oh, that'd be perfect. Just elevates it another. Yeah, because it's slightly warm still. But it's gorgeous. It really is gorgeous. Here's the lid for that, Jay. The lid. Lid and fridge. Right. Now then. Now then, now then, now then. Now then, now then. My air fried chickpeas. Oh. Are going in. The pot. Air fried chicken. You're going to have to put the again, Jay. There we go. Right, my air fried chickpeas are in there. Now, so this is um, recipe number three falafel. Yeah. Yes. I did make some notes. Oh, see, I made some, I made some notes. Can you see at the bottom notes. there? Notes. So no specific recipe. Just right now. Then, if I've got this right, chickpeas in, chopped onion in, and again, I'm not doing this by measure. I'm just kind of. So let's say that's a tin of chickpeas and two tablespoons of chopped onion. Uh, Frank says, how long did you air fry the chickpeas for and at what temperature? Uh, 175 for about 20 minutes. 175 for about 20 minutes. Hope that helps, Frank. Right. <laughs> You've got every right to be giddy, Lauren. Every right to be giddy. You stare that way. Why is she giddy? Because of Biden. I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> Aren't we all a little bit? I am. We know what's to come. Can we know this. Stay up for the speeches last night, I know Imran and uh, Liam did. And we did as well. <laughs> right. I've got some chopped frozen coriander. So I've got I've put about uh, two and a half heat teaspoons of tahini in, one tin of chickpeas, two tablespoons of chopped onion, mixed red and white if you want. <laughs> I think Imran says, I think he's referencing the speech, it was totesimo. <laughs> no way, Imran. No way. You saw 2017. Heat tablespoon of frozen coriander. Oh, Will and Chris, thank you for joining us. Uh, and thank you for the kind words about the song. Thank you, in fact, to everybody who has left really nice comments and has taken the time to check out my uh, song, Sick. 
that was uploaded yesterday. And writing credit for Paul. If you well. haven't checked it out, please do. It's a bloody good song. One o'clock this morning, thank kitchen here, waiting for Biden and Harris to come on speech. Said to him, can't get your song out here. He said, that's a good thing. I said, is it? Better than bloody Dawson's Creek. I want, sorry. <laughs> Heat teaspoon of ground coriander. About the same of cumin. Can everybody hear Paul? Okay. Do I have to parrot what he's saying? Cumin and coriander. That's understandable, Angie. There's a parental advisory on there for uh, for a reason. Do you know what I mean? It's not for the kids. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Chippy onion tahini. Hot sauce or water. Everybody can hear you loud and clear. Right. I'm just going to grab... Bit of chopped kale. Because I haven't got any parsley. So I'm gonna use kale instead. Oh kale, you've been on floor I live in it. Five second rule. I'm gonna be interested to see how these come out, particularly with the addition of the kale and whether it'll kind of come through and whether you'll be able to kind of you know whether you'll be able to taste it. I'm guessing so. <laughs> Just reading, reading a few of your comments, scrolling through whilst Paul is uh... right. Potato, potato. So what I did before, because I've read a few recipes that said this about using potato as the binding agent. So what I did before was I pricked a potato and I put it in the um, microwave for about seven minutes. Then left it to cool and then skinned it. And potato is what I'm going to be using as the binding agent in this. Right. Who knew? Well, I didn't. It's just like a medium-sized potato. And then for liquid, you can add water, but I'm going to use hot sauce. Yes, because you know we like a bit of spice in our lives. I wouldn't say we're proper chilli heads, but we do like... Um, that was probably about two level tablespoons of chilli sauce. So there you go. Right. Angie says... Simon Rimmer used to do a carrot and coriander falafel mix. It was delicious. Mm. We've got Simon Rimmer's book, actually. I'll have a, have a flick through. It might even be in there. Who oh, knows? we met him, didn't we? We met him. Ate at his lovely restaurant went, many, went, many moons ago. Went to his restaurant. Yeah. Nice. Proper nice. I tell you what, the man is a tower. Jesus. Is didn't realise. Like, his hand's the size of my head. Massive. Uh, Lauren says, what would you use instead of chilli sauce? Water. Or water. stock. Water or so stock. You've, chucked, you, you've, you've, you've done your um, chickpeas in stock. Same, like aquafaba, I'd use that. And Denise, yes, that is a cooked potato that Paul is using as the binding element. Or part of the binding element. Whoa. Oh my God. <laughs> Smell good? Yeah. Like, really good, though. So far, so good. Because what we do is, you know, with our lives, sometimes we do stuff that we've never done before. It's an experiment.
How are we doing? Okay. It's, uh, it's, a good, it's a good texture. Yeah, why haven't they invented smelly vision yet? I might just need a little bit more liquid. A little bit more liquid? Just a little bit. I just want to loosen it up slightly. Ah, that's the one. That's the one. Imran's oh. fallen asleep already. Who? Imran. Imran's fallen asleep with his phone in his hand watching you guys. So lame. <laughs> I think Imran finds my voice really soothing. Yeah, it's just relaxing. Sunday afternoon nap with those vegan guys. Not wrong with that. Imran! <laughs> A sugar plum. You've missed loads. We're on to recipe number three. Recipe, a uh, chickpea recipe number three. We've done uh, a tuna um, and we've done hummus. Uh, I said we, Paul has. Um, and we are now doing falafel as the third recipe of our cook along. So uh, you missed a bit, but you're here. That's the main thing. And thank you for joining us. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Kelly. <laughs> Imran said, actually, Paul's voice is quite soothing, up to that point, anyway. <laughs> dear, dear. Tuna. Sugar plum. Not tuna. Tuna. With chickpeas. You'll have to watch back later. Catch up. <laughs> it's probably my uh, my accent not quite uh, coming through or making sense. Tuna, tuna. Right now, I've got to work out how to do this. Well, first off, I think I just need to get it out into a bowl. Is what I need to do. Yes. Yes. Mm. It's a good texture. It might even be a tiny bit wet. Yeah. But I needed to get it looser in the mixer so it sort of mix. Uh, Livius, same as I'm the same. I wasn't ma massively keen on the tuna. Um, that you can get in the supermarkets, but the stuff that Paul's made genuinely is it's it's top notch. I think by and large, anything you make yourself at home where you are in control of the ingredients and so you put in the levels of what you like in something, yeah, it's always going to be better. And I completely understand, you know, not a lot of people have got the time to be doing that kind of stuff. Totally get that, but if you can. I think that's why I, I like to do these videos, because I like to show that actually just an hour or so in the kitchen and you can whip up a few things, you know, really easily with cheap ingredients that aren't going to cost the earth. Yeah. Um, and that hopefully people will really enjoy. Yeah. Well, I mean, to kind of just to sort of clarify and for anyone who's, who's sort of uh, recently joined uh, the, the live stream today, it's essentially three completely awesome things done with chickpeas in around an hour to an hour and a half. So it's pretty awesome, really, isn't it? Yeah. And that, that would be tuna-style spread, hummus, and falafel, which is the last bit we're doing just now. And we can just, I could just sit down and have a chat while this is in the air fryer, even though the air fryer will be right really noisy. <clears throat> right. So, oh, sorry. Here's the mix that I've done with the air fried chickpeas. So they've been boiled and then they've been air fried. And as you can see, it's very thick and it's very doughy. And that's what we want, really, because we want to be able to roll these now into shapes. Could you wash your hands, Mr. Bromley? I certainly can. Because uh, I think it'd be better if you do this bit because of me. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. They just want rolling into little circles or balls or whatever and spacing evenly in this, which I'm then going to put in the air fryer. So we're not we're not doing square falafel today then, no. And round would be easier. Round would be easier, yeah. 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 If you're, uh, if you're enjoying the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up so that uh, we can permeate throughout the interwebs. <laughs> and you do that by closing the chat, pressing the like button, and then reopening the chat. You won't have missed anything. Everything will still be there, exactly as it was before. I'll get that off there. Yeah, this is a nice mix, this. Yeah. Mm. Well, this is completely new for me. I've never, I've never made rolled falafel. I've never, you know, balled the falafel. In fact, it might be better with two, with a, you might get a spoon first, like a tablespoon. A tablespoon one. <laughs> because what we can do, you see, is we can get like, so that's like your average size of a falafel. That's big. So then you roll that into a ball. Oh, see, I'm going off go falafel size, but in reality, falafel is different sizes, isn't it? Of course it is. So how, how am I going to roll this into a ball? Well, shall I do one? I, I'll just keep my finger out of the way. Oh, okay. Oh, <clears throat> no, it's a little bit wet. Is it? Is it doable, though? Because um, I'm quite happy to just sit here and plow on with that. That looks all right. Should have had the camera down. Sorry, I was distracted. Sorry, people. I've got to do wash my hands now. Okay, so I just carry on like that. Yeah, just like blob it in there. I think just straight away, I can clearly observe we're going to have some mix left over. Well, then make them bigger. Oh, just bloody. Oh, splash, what have you done? Splash water on my pants and I look like a weed with Oh. Look. Oh, no. I haven't weed people on it. It's weed him, Sen. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, Suzanne, that's a great idea. If only we had one. What? Use an ice cream scoop. <laughs> that, that is so, uh, such an obvious solution to this problem right here. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it like Paul did. Take that off there. Just try and get it into some kind of shape and get it in there. It doesn't really matter. We need a little bit of space between them as well, don't we, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little... And of course, a lot of people would deep fry these. And then they would hope that they went crispy on the outside instead, kind of fluffy in the middle. But we're going to bake them in the air fryer instead today to just try and be a little bit healthier. See, now that one now needs more on it. Yeah, it's all right. I'll sort that out in a second. I'm getting... Getting more used to it now. All right, I'll just do that. Look. Look how clever I am. Nice. Don't matter about balling it now. Yeah. One more? Yeah, definitely. Might even get two. Might get one here and one in the middle. Mm -hmm. I might... I might just shallow fry some just to see what they're like fried as well. Yeah. Well, like you just said, there's going to be some left. Oh, you some of the mix, yeah, definitely. I don't want to waste it, because it's um, good stuff. Where's not one, no! Where's not one, no! Watch it, watch yourself. Fantata. There we go. Nice. Best finger. <laughs> right, I'm going to get these in the air fryer. Still on 175. And we'll just see how we go. But I am going to, uh, where's the little frying pan? 
Oh, it's there. Oh. Oh, yeah. Am I right? Mmm. Yeah, Denise I've met, says, I made them in the oven. Uh, Denise, yeah, I bet they'll turn out great in the air fryer. Everything does. Everything does. Mm. I'm sure it'll be great in the oven as well. Right, I'm just going to rin rinse my hands. Oh, nice kick. Nice kick as well with the, uh, the sauce added as part of the binder. But not too much. Just enough of a kick. But yeah, the uh, the idea of the uh, the ice cream scoop is a great idea. I don't know why we've not got an ice cream scoop. We're just never bothered. Just always use a spoon. But yeah, there you go. So the air fryer's on. Flaffles are in there. But Paul, you're gonna do uh, you're gonna try frying a few as well, did you say? Put the frying pan there. All right. I couldn't hear it. I couldn't hear the frying. Ah, Sugar Plum says, Aldi have air fryers on special buys next week. Worth buying? We would Absolutely. say, yeah, we would say 100%. 100%. I wouldn't, it's not replaced the oven, but it's 80%, isn't it? 80% replaced the oven. Healthier, quicker, more taste, energy efficient, more energy efficient, tastier food. It wins out. A lot, lot of boxes ticked with the uh, with the air fryer, so yeah. Oh, Mrs. B has just got the same one as us. Nice. Well, if you look on most of our air fryer videos, there's an affiliate link for an air fryer. Yeah. Yes, which means we get a few pence if you uh, if you decide to buy your air fryer through our affiliate link with Amazon. So there you go. But yeah, I think anybody who owns an air fryer will uh, will sing its praises all day long. Uh, I know uh, mum and dad uh, who will probably be watching. Um, I hope they are, and then they usually are. Hi mum and dad, hi Auntie Pearl. Um, they uh, were so impressed with our air fryer from watching the vlogs that they've got one now, and mum uses it for loads of stuff. She makes cakes and, and all sorts. So yeah, great investment, I think, all round. Good point, Fern. Wow. Uh, she says, uh, is your air fryer on? I always thought they were really noisy. No, it's on right now. Oh, and thank you for your, uh, thank you for your kind words about the song as well, Fern. That's really nice of you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Lisa says, I'm not allowed any more kitchen gadget gadgets. I have too many. <laughs> Turn that up a bit. Ah, Marcus is in the house. Thanks for joining us, Marcus. I think GVG popped in earlier and said hello as well. Yeah. Grumpy vegan granddad. Ah. Hmm. All is good with the world today. So yeah, if I'm if I'm understanding what Sugar Plum's written, uh, the sixty nine dollars at Aldi and four hundred and ninety nine dollars for the Philips, which is the most popular one. That's a massive price difference. Massive price difference. Oh, Lisa, you should um, you should try your waffle maker, definitely. I only say that because I saw um, Lisa the Viet Vegan using a waffle maker last week on one of her vlogs. And I was literally, my mouth just like drooling. 
So them and the, them and the pan fried ones. They look great. Which are done with um, just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Some of the pan fried falafel. Nice. We'll just leave them to cool for a minute. Yeah. And then uh, we'll give it a shot, Jay. Yeah, we'll let them cool and have a little try. I'll try one out. It smells gorgeous. It smells really gorgeous. Well, this is the thing. I think once you start kind of looking into recipes for ingredients that you use a lot, you can find so many that are really easy and you just make it yours. I rarely, if ever, follow a recipe to the letter. I'll get guidelines from it and then I'm like, oh, I'd use that instead of this. No, I'm going to use less of that, more of, of this, you know. Personalise it, customise it. Always. Always. Al almost always. Yeah. Yeah. Crispy. Tasty, hopefully. Oh, thank you for the likes, guys. We've gone over 100 likes. Thank you. Hey. Thank you so, so much. If you're watching and you've liked the video, thank you. We, we, we really appreciate it. Special place in our hearts right here. Shall we? Wearing my chubby pants. Mm. Actual chubby pants. That's gorgeous. Oh. Isn't that gorgeous? Yes. Yeah. I'm so glad when I say I'm going to do something and I'm doing it's a success because this could have been dreadful. It could have been. You could have been joining us now and I could have been crying in the kitchen over there. <laughs> Jason explaining to you all about how I was going to be all right, but things had gone terribly wrong. So just give us a few minutes, yeah, <laughs> while we get over this. Um, yeah, that's amazing. That's absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, but that's isn't that part of the fun, though? Isn't that part of the adventure of uh, our Sunday cook along in the kitchen? Because sometimes Paul's going to be doing something he's never done before. No oh, idea well, how it's going to turn out. Well, no, I usually I stick to things I know mm. and I'm very comfortable with. But now and again... But like I say, Adi, I'm liking these themed videos, tofu, mm. chickpeas, what can we do with these things? We can make incredible stuff. We can make falafel and tuna style spread and hummus in just over an hour. Yeah. Leanne says, there's nothing like the science of making shit up. <laughs> there you go. So we're waiting for the air fryer, obviously. Um, this is the shallow fried for that version of the falafel. Very nice. Proper tasty. Is it? I think I might have put a little bit too much chilli. No, I think the chilli's fine. I would say... A lot of people wouldn't like it. Because yeah. Because of the chilli, but we're, we're like... I've got a sweat film just from one bite. Also, it's worth saying the Ancona that you've used is on the, on the high end of, of hot sauces. So you could use you could use just a, a hint. What is John's talking about getting a pound in or something? I don't. It's know. very rude. In I don't chest. know where we wound, boys. Where we wound? <laughs> Does anybody know where I've got that from? Well, there was where we wound, master. There was where we wound. It's a kids' movie. Can I? Am I right to have a bit more? Not that it's saved for any particular reason, are they? Really? No, can I have half of that? Yeah. Um, will the ones in the air fryer be firmer, do you think? Probably, because they've had a... That's what I said, though. I put a bit too much liquid in it. Mm -hmm. In the mix, it should have been a little, little bit drier. But I was adding that liquid to get it to move and, and combine. Oh. So nice. So, so nice. Um, Frank. I really are, though, aren't I? Thank you for reiterating and making a really good point once again that you made right at the start, Paul. Um, all that food with just about 250 grams of dried chickpeas. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's great because it's like falafel will do us for a meal. Hummus would do us for several meals or snacks. Mm -hmm. The tuna spread on sandwiches. <coughs> 
proper, proper nice. Very nice. Yeah, very, very nice. I love them. Just wish the mixture would have been a little bit drier. Um, but that's all. First time, though. Mm -hmm. Pretty awesome. Oh, I'm not going to complain. I've, I'm very pleased with today's kitchen shenanigans. Indeed. Indeed. So, whilst we're waiting for the falafel in the air fryer, mm -hmm. do you want to just touch momentarily on what is coming up soon in terms of um, our week of whole food plant-based? I'll let people know about that. Yeah, so we're, we're going to be doing a full week of mainly, not fully, mainly, mainly whole food plant-based, because I should imagine you're still going to be having your fruit and crumpet or bagel in the morning. I'm going to be having porridge and fruit. Um, and yeah, we're just going to do a, a week and we're going to get start getting back on the exercise bike and just kick ourselves up a notch because we keep talking about it, then something happens. Mm -hmm. We start it, then something happens and we stop. So I just want to do a week of mainly whole food plant-based to see how we feel because last time we did it for five days and I felt amazing yeah and I have to own that yeah I have to own that I did but mm -hmm. I love my junk food you see I love my pies and my pasties and my sausages and stuff but it's like right well let's see if you can do without it let's see if you can actually base your meals on whole foods the entire meal mm -hmm. as much of it as possible yeah yeah, you know, and then, you know, gradually over a period of time, we will arrive at a, a nice balance point week where tomorrow. Yeah, week on Monday. So Monday, the what day will that be, Jason? Um, I could probably work out in my head, but because my brain's not the best. Or should we start it on the Saturday? Oh, we can't. We'll be doing it. So mukbangs this Saturday coming in, mm -hmm. too. So no, we can't see. So yeah, Monday. Monday's perfect. Monday the 16th. Monday the 16th of November will begin our seven days of mostly whole food plant-based and <clears throat> exercise, forcing ourselves to do exercise every day, even if it's just five minutes. Mm -hmm. And we will report really honestly with you the progression and how we feel. Yeah, it's and, kind of a, in a way, I suppose it's a bit of a sort of pre-festive, health kick you know before we get to the uh the inevitable festivities and uh the the time of of, of indulgence for many not for all but for many um so, so yeah pre-festive health kick which we will carry through into the new year um yeah these look amazing yeah do they do they look round well you know roundish kind of uh, Sugar Plum, we will probably start by uh, just gradually int reintroducing ourselves to the exercise bike in the kitchen. Yes. Uh, low impact, um, y y something you can just sit on, listen to some music. Probably what I'm going to aim to do that that week. And I appreciate your question, Sugar Plum, because it makes me think about it. And that helps me to formulate a plan so that I'm not just going into it blind. Yeah. I'll probably do minimum five minutes on the exercise bike. But I'll try for 10. And you never know. It might be that I end up doing five on day one and then I'm, I'm like, oh, I can do 15 easy. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not holding myself to anything. Only five minutes on the exercise bike. And then some floor work with, because we've got mats. Yes. So, you know, some stretches, some press-ups, some leg extensions. Uh, and I'm going to also try and aim to, like if I'm sat watching YouTube, why can't I stand up for five minutes and do jogging on the spot while I'm watching YouTube? I'm very aware that I'm on the cusp of getting to the point where, I mean, I'm not happy at this weight now anyway. I'm 78 kilograms and I'm not happy here. I've never been happy here. The only me can change it. Mm. Oh, there's only me as sugar food in my gob. But like going back to what you were saying before, it starts with realistic goals. So there's no point in saying, I'm going to do an hour on the exercise bike every night when in actual fact, set a realistic goal, five minutes, and then build from there. Um, and we've both got a well on that. You know what I mean? We have. And quite a few people very keen to uh, be involved in that. Oh, Tim, I'm going to be vlogging it daily. That's why I'm doing it. It's, it's going to be daily vlogged. It might be the day after. Yeah. But I will document all meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, 
and the exercise we've done that day. Yeah. And we'll probably we may it may be that we do a couple of minutes at the end of each one of those days, just saying how we're feeling. Yeah, and, yeah. You know. Yeah. Marcus is going to join us as well. Brilliant. He's uh, he's wanting to you know uh, get get a bit healthier and uh, manage the weight a little bit. And Stacey as well. So yeah, lots of people are keen. I think we all recognise it in ourselves, don't we? Is that kind of we've all kind of been through a quite a stressful period. There's a lot going on in the world, and it yeah. impacts you, even um, if you think it isn't. Um, but then also equally. Um, we as human beings sometimes can use that as an excuse to perhaps treat ourselves a bit more than we would, become a little bit um, sedentary, you know, a bit more sedentary uh, and not doing as much exercise. I'm very aware at the moment uh, between uh, the day job with work um, and editing and playing computer games, I'm very aware of how much time I sit looking at a screen um and 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 the science around how dangerous that can be uh just kind of being sat constantly uh so yeah onwards and upwards as they say onwards and upwards some of you uh may be able to tell that the air fryer has stopped and paul is beavering away behind me and turning them round to give them another couple of minutes on the on the other side <laughs> Lisa says, me and the kids have been doing exercise with Mr. Motivator, if anyone remembers him. Oh, I used to fancy him, so not rotten. <laughs> <laughs> totally did. Firm buns in Lycra, girl, I'm there. <laughs> have you ever tried what? Fit on, free app, lots of different options, low impact to... Uh, to uh, uh, high intensity training, also meditation for overall mental health too. Exercise options between five minutes to forty minutes. Lots of choice. That's fantastic. And our good friend um, Hedge Rider, who's one of our moderators, has joined the Running Punks. Um, not the Running Punks, just Running Punks. So you can check them out on Twitter and on the web and everything. And they seem like a really like massively supportive of each other group. And um, Jimmy, the guy that runs it, does like plans for people. Uh, so, yeah. Lisa says he still has very good legs. Who? Mr. Motivator. <laughs> and uh, Marcus says Paul will have to be Mr. Vegivator. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it, Marcus. Yes. You know what I tried the other day? I'll show you. It works. It don't work brilliantly, but it works. I don't know where he's gone. I don't know what he's doing. Who knows? I'm sure most of you are eagerly awaiting the uh, the falafel to come out of the air fryer. That's what you're all hanging around for, really, isn't it? I'm kind of eager myself, to be honest. Okay. She said it won't be a sec. Uh, so, yeah, going back to what Paul was saying before, um, we got, um, we finally invested in a couple of yoga mats. Um, so that's going to become part of the process uh, in terms of just doing stuff until it becomes habit. Um, and then it doesn't, it's not even something we think about anymore then really. So like one of the things, prime example of this is um, Probably over a year ago now, quite a while back, we started doing a little bit of a breathing exercise before we go to sleep every night. And, and we did it for a week or two. And now it's not even something we think about. Even when we're on holiday, we're, holidays, remember them? Um, it's not even something we think about anymore. Oh, have you, you've been to the dentist? <laughs> I was experimenting with stuff. The Gemini. Paper. Amazing. Amazing. Interesting point, Marcus. Um, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned this because it gives me a chance to just reference. Um, Marcus says, waiting for you to do us another song, Jason. There is definitely going to be more music on the way um, as soon as I possibly can. Um, but I'm not going to do so much on live streams anymore um, because the observant among you uh, may or may not have noticed that um, YouTube live streaming does not like guitar and singing at the same time. It can just about handle when we have a sing, you know, like when John or someone shouts us out and asks us 
uh, you know, gives us a request or something now and again. Um, but for some bizarre reason, whenever I'm singing and playing guitar at the same time, YouTube live streaming really doesn't like it. And it's something to do with the digital signal being processed. It just, it sounds a little bit like I'm performing underwater. There you go. Whoa. Look what I made. Lady. With my very own fingers and hands. Ladies and gentlemen, air fried falafel. I'm impressed. And that playback. Yes, 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 yes. Good we'll, shout. We'll just take one out and then cut it in half and see um, what it's like. So I'll pass it a fork. So this is the air fried apple. Oh. It's very crispy. Oh, oh it's crispy, but it's fluffy on the inside. Oh. Oh, do you see? Do you see the beautiful flare? I've, I've, I've adjusted the focus on the camera, so hopefully people will be able to see it a bit closer up. Yeah, it looks gorgeous. Kazakhstan, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to? Hey, gonna... have you all heard? By the way, Kazakhstan, bless them, have officially adopted very nice as their new tourist tourism promotion. Kazakhstan, very nice. Very nice. Because of Bora. I think that's amazing. That's like, yes, use something to your advantage. Positive marketing. Ooh. In fact, I'll have the, I'll have the, the messed up bit. Is this for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have the big bit. Whoa. Mmm. Mmm. We, we watched it, oh, I think we watched it the night it was on Amazon, 25th. Mm -hmm. Isn't it nice? Yeah. This is good and it's also bad because now I'm like, Paul, why why do you buy falafel? Yeah, but why are you buying it when you can make it? We said this about hummus. We said this about nan breads. Because nan, <clears throat> nan breads in the supermarket, quite hard to get all the vegan ones. Mm. You know, they are out there. Sometimes it's just about convenience, and that's fine as well. But, as people have said in the comments, as Paul has said today... Hey, Ryder, Lauren, you filthy... You filthy... It's always going to taste better at home. Pass me the hummus. Let's have... Let's have half one of these fried ones with hummus on it. You get me? Lauren said it. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, in food, brilliant. In food, brilliant. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, yeah. I am fully wearing my chufty pants today, guys. Rock and roll. Really wearing my chufty pants. Mmm. Right, we'll just have another five, ten minutes with you guys and then we'll get off um, because if any of you want to pop along to um, Michelle, Michelle's live at five. Yeah. Gives you a bit of time to have a brew and a wee and, you know, spray your bits. I don't know what you do. Stuff. <laughs> Stuff that make you feel better about yourself. Can I have that? No, don't be horrible to me. Give me at least a bite. Hmm. Whoa, gorgeous. In a pitcher with the hummus. Well, that's what we would normally do, Denise. Yeah, Denise. Yeah. When we do our... This for me now? Yeah. yeah. Did you see our um, Mediterranean mukbang? We do that, as in we don't do it as a mukbang a lot, but maybe once a fortnight, every three weeks, we have a big bowl of salad, falafels, hummus, pizza bread... We used to, I used to do the salad with that Sainsbury's Greek-style cheese in it and <clears> um, <throat> pomegranates. Mm. But that Greek-style cheese is so fatty. I don't, we've not seen we it for a while. No, we haven't. To be fair. Livia, you're absolutely right. It's rude not to share. It's rude for us not to share. Oh, we can so share via the medium of the visual. 
And that is all. Unless you want us to stick some in an envelope and send it to you. <laughs> yeah, it's one of our favourite um, things, Denise. We're, we're very global eaters, aren't we? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We'll, we'll eat Mediterranean, Oriental, Asian. I even did um, one of our family meals we did. I did a proper American style meal uh, for the family. That's on a vlog as well. We had... Um, Corn chowder, start. Burgers, curly fries, slaw, and all that for the mains. Mm -hmm. And then cherry cobbler for the dessert. You were good. So good. Yeah, they were right good. Dude. Love it, love it. Miss those, um, miss those family meals so, so much. Mm. But, like, really miss them. We used to have one a month. And I can't wait until we can have them again. Yeah. Because um, it's just really nice. Which reminds me, whilst we've got 117 in the house, thank you all, by the way, for uh, coming and joining us this afternoon. It's uh, it's always a delight. We'd do it if there were five people live, but it's extra special when we, we, hit, we go over 100, and that's brilliant. But, quick reminder, we will be streaming for a, a short while, live, on Christmas Day. Um, because... Three o'clock. Three o'clock. Because we can't... You know, we couldn't stand the thought of somebody um, spending Christmas Day on their own, yeah. eating on their own, um, when they'd really fancy a bit of company. I so. will not tolerate that. Yes. So we're going to do we're that. Not, we're going to live stream on Christmas Day, three o'clock, um, and we'll be eating our Christmas dinner um, and just generally having a bit of banter for a bit. Deneen, I think because I've made these now, I think we might be having that Mediterranean-ish style meal tonight. We've got hummus, we've got yeah, a bottle. daft not to. There's about four packets of pita breads in the freezer. They don't take long to defrost. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So, yeah, let's finish up now with, uh, if any of you have got any questions or... Yes. All of that. That's a chat that's been going on for a, a few minutes. Oh, well, yes. I shall leave that where it is then. Oh, Pauline. 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 Well, we're just about finished. What have you done? We've done all sorts. In fact, <laughs> let's get them to we re things. Are we recapping? Well, yeah. We'll yeah, let's let's recap. Get the things out. Okay, so that's that's the thing. And that's the thing. And that's the thing. And here's the other thing. There's some things. A little recap before we finish. So we've used, um, I'll say it again, we've used about 230 grams of dried chickpeas. Quick soaked them for an hour in boiling water, then 40 minutes on high pressure in the instant pot in stock. From those chickpeas, which we've split into three parts, we've made tuna style spread, which is mashed chickpeas, onion, lemon juice, apple cider vinegar, salt and pepper, seaweed, onion. It just needs sweet corn. There's already a bit of mayo in there. It's beautiful. We've made a lovely, perfect, fluffy hummus with the rest, uh, with the second third. And we've just made air fryer falafels. I did a uh, few in the pan as well with oil, fried them. Just to try them out. They were great. Both nice. Both really Both nice. proper nice. Um, and Pauline, hope you're feeling better soon. And thank you for joining us. And I'm glad that you um, uh, found the recap useful. Uh, but I'm, I'm, you know, I suppose most people find the recap useful. Um, as we wind things up, any quick questions to fire our way? I'll pop this stuff back in the fridge. Yeah, because that's uh, lovely. Homemade hummus really is the best, isn't it? When I kind of discovered how to make it and make it well, and then I got a bit adventurous with the flavours. We did a red pepper and chilli one once. I've done a lemon and coriander. Just done some really nice, mm -hmm. fresh hummuses. It's uh, worth it, isn't it? Yeah, beautiful. Because it's not the cheapest to buy in store, hummus. So. Yeah, they're amazing. They are really. I wasn't sure how they were going to turn out, to and be honest. Isn't the kale a good addition? Yeah, yeah. Although... They benefit from parsley. What I said before, and because you've used the Encona, um, I, I can't taste the kale in there. <laughs> to be fair, to be honest, I can't. Because it's too hot. Yeah. But I'm not complaining about that. I don't mind. How long, long does the hummus keep in the fridge? About four or five days in a sealed container. 
Yes. Because um, don't forget, you've got lemon juice in there and you've got tahini, so it's not oil-free. Oil and lemon, both preservatives. So, yeah, about four or five, five days in a, in a sealed container, although we've eaten it seven days later and it was fine. Yeah. So, um, Elaine's um, comment there. Um, Paul, please, please, marinated tofu, arg, can't get it right for toffee. We've got a vlog on that, haven't we? You've done marinated tofu. Yeah, if you um, if you look up, as I always say, uh, if there's anything that you want specifically, check our channel first. If you go to our channel, what? Lawrence, <laughs> Head just said, just said the same thing. There's a video on the channel, Elaine. Yeah, but if you go <laughs> to the channel and choose the, it's better on a desktop, doesn't work so well on a phone. Because if you click the search option from our channel, on a phone, it searches all of YouTube. If you click the search option on our channel from a desktop, it searches only our channel. You type in tofu into the top of our channel and everything we've ever done with tofu will come up. Um, and when we did tofu, uh, didn't we do crispy baked? Yes. Um, what else did we do? Scrambled tofu. Yeah, it was like tofu three ways, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But tofu is trial and error. You know, it is a little bit, but um, if you follow the basic principles, um, generally, it should be all right. Why does it not work for you, Muddy, I wonder? I think it's got to... See, imagine tofu as a sponge. This is going to be the easiest way to describe it. This is why it needs pressing, because it's got a load of water in it that is sucked up. So when you do press it, and then you put it into your marinade after you've pressed it, straight after you've pressed it, it starts to expand again slightly, just like a sponge, and it pulls the flavour in to the marinade. The trick is not to use a lot, hmm. but strong, bold flavours like soy sauce. It's got to be, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strong and bold. Strong and bold. So, yes, there you go. Tofu science. It is indeed science. I mean, it really is. Yeah, it's worth it. It's worth the effort. It's it's well worth the effort. When we first went vegan, tofu was like an alien concept, but it is well worth. Oh, that sounds gorgeous, Kelly. Lovely soy sauce, spring onion, chili, and garlic. She's got some marinated in the fridge for tomorrow. Good, good, good. Fantastic. Very nice. Hmm. Yeah, I'm looking forward to. Uh, I'm looking forward to eating now. Yeah, it's going to be a good dinner. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry about the pile of pots you've got. Ah, oh. there's a huge amount of pots now. But you know what? Hopefully, this video is going to be really, really helpful because it will be on the channel now forever. <clears throat> it's going to be really helpful for people who are a bit wary of chickpeas or who don't know how many things you can do with chickpeas and just the discussions that we have with you guys as well. Like. You know, somebody mentioned uh, air fryer spicy chickpeas. And yeah. So we got talking about them. So really, we've talked about four, five, six things you can do with chickpeas just in this one vlog. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that's I think that's great. And very helpful. Amazing. Right. Amazing. Let's bring this to a close, guys. Um I might, uh, I might see some of you. I might um, pop on Michelle's live myself uh, for five, ten minutes uh, before I kind of crack down to dinner. But thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you for everyone who's took the time to watch, to like the video. Thank you to very specially to everyone with a green name who is a, a financial supporter of the channel. That stuff helps like you wouldn't believe. Thank you to all our Patreons. Thank you to our incredible mods. Hedge Rider, Leanne and Kelly, who give their time, you know, for just a mug. Hmm. I still owe uh, Leanne a mug. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? It's great. Give us a subscribe if you haven't already. Um, it would mean an awful lot. It really uh, it does genuinely help us tremendously. Uh, and it's free. Completely free. Just boom. Hit the bell notification every time we're doing stuff you'll find out about it um because 
you're watching us anyway, and if you haven't subscribed, you know. <laughs> I'll sort it for you soon. Well, it depends. Do you want one of the old style mugs or do you want one of the new mugs? It's an important question. Either or. Either or. You're getting yeah. one. You're getting one. <laughs> yeah, you're getting one. Bless you all for being uh, coming along. That's that's the, that's what we finish on right there. That picture right there. <laughs> You've all been awesome. And um, thanks for your questions. Thanks for just joining us, being a part of this wonderful community. Everything that Paul said before. Um, it's been a lovely, lovely Sunday afternoon as always. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm knocking everything. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, we'll see you again very soon. Uh, and see you, some of you over at that bloody Michelle's, the gobby northern broad she is. <laughs> it's a compliment to a northern woman. Um, northern man as well. I'm a gob, I'm quite the gobby northern broad. No. Yeah. Uh, right, thanks everyone. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you again very soon. And until then, please be excellent to yourselves and each other. Bye, loves. <laughs>